If your heart beats passionately for people who have wandered far from God, this series, Eats with Sinners, explores the characteristics of Jesus everyone desires. Um, we are in this series uh, where we have been walking through the Gospel of Luke, looking at the characteristics of Jesus that drew people to him. So we looked at his integrity. And we talked about his humility and his self-sacrificing attitude and, and willingness to go to Jerusalem. He set his face towards Jerusalem. And, 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 and so uh, we looked at these characteristics that uh, compelled people to hear his message. He even showed tolerance, not only to sinners, but to pe- the righteous uh, who were condemning him for hanging out with people who were sinners. And so uh, we examined uh, how this type of man, the, this Jesus, the model for every human, uh, is the type of people that we want to become. Because unless we know who Jesus is, it's hard to become like him. And that's why it's so important that we spend time in the Gospels. We spend time looking at who Jesus is, thinking about it, talking about it, and, and discussing it. Because we want to be like that. Because when we become like him, we'll draw people to the Father like he did. And so uh, in this series, we've been uh, looking at a bunch of uh, aspects, but today we're looking at vision. We're looking at how Jesus looked at people. So I want you to take this vision test with me, if you would. So if you can read what's on the screen, just raise your hand. Don't read it out, all right? But uh, uh, we're going to see if you can pass your next driver's test. All right, can anyone read this sentence from where they're sitting? Anybody? Uh, I know there's a liar in the back. Uh, one of our deacons, get him out. So, uh, <laughs> out. No. Uh, and it, it, how about this? How about, can you read it now? No? Don't, don't say it aloud, just raise your hand. See, no, all right, there, all right, so how about now? Anybody can see it now? All right, how about now? It's not changing? It's not changing? How about changing it for me? Go back, oh, there we go. All right, well, we're ahead. Uh, back it up one. I want to see if anybody can read it. Go back one, go back one. Yes, back one, not going back one. All right, we're not going back. Well, can anyone tell us what, what was on the screen? Yeah, that he gave his only one gotten son. So, so sometimes we have vision problems. Now, this guy right here, uh, Harvey Turner, he's a good guy. He uh, uh, demonstrated this immense ability to reach people. Harvey Turner was a high school dropout, I mean, not a, a, a youth group dropout, Got involved in drugs, got involved in um, things that he shouldn't be, got distant from God, started rapping and, and, and even selling drugs in Reno. Uh, he, 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 he comes to a very low spot in his life, a, a time when he had um, uh, been arrested. And in doing so, he uh, went home after the, he got out of jail for a little while and, and, and got a Bible out his parents gave him. He began to read the Bible and he began reading about Jesus in the Gospels. And in doing so, he found out that Jesus was a friend of sinners. It convicted him so much that he goes, well, maybe, I, maybe Jesus could be my friend. So he gave his life to Christ, and he became a friend of sinners. He started going to churches, trying to learn all that he could about Jesus. But people were kind of pushing him away because of how he looked, because he just walked away from the, you know, his drug lifestyle, rapper lifestyle. And uh, uh, he started doing Bible studies uh, in some of the old party houses that he that he would go to. So there might be a bong or rolling papers or dope or whatever on the table. He'd have his Bible out. He's trying to share Jesus with these people. And he's just like, I'm not going to forget the people that, uh, that I was friends with. And so he literally tried to be a friend of sinners. And if you can, can you move my slides for me? Because something's not working here. Uh, but anyway, he, he says in his book, he says that he, uh, Jesus was a type of person that constantly took his followers out to, uh, to, to reach other people, to reach people who were distant from God. He got his followers next to people uh, and, and trying to get them to understand the gospel uh, and, and to understand who he was. Next slide, if you would. So Jesus, he is, uh, he, he's always looking for people distant from God. Jesus was the kind of person that he didn't walk by people. Uh, He looked for people that other people would walk by. Uh, He did not look at their tattoos or piercings or who they were sleeping with. Like, that was not who Jesus was. He wanted to have a spiritual conversation with people 
who were distant from God. He wanted to tell them about a kingdom that they had never heard about. He wanted them to uh, be introduced to a system, uh, I mean, to a, to a kingdom that they could belong to and that they could m- remove themselves from a religious system that was, that was defunct of God's spirit, right, and come in contact with the living God. And so Jesus, uh, there's this amazing story that is found in Luke chapter 19 about this guy named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, we find uh, in this passage, first verse, Jesus entered Jericho, and as he was passing through there, a man by the name of Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Just pause here for a second. Let me tell you a little bit about Zacchaeus as a chief tax collector. Here's what we know. He might have been the leader of all the tax collectors for a region or maybe all of Palestine. And, and so these tax collectors, they had the ability uh, to muscle people with the Roman army uh, to get what Rome was wanting. And Rome didn't care how much the tax collector charged. The tax collector could uh, take in above and beyond what Rome wanted. Because of that, they were hated. Not only for that reason were they hated, but this guy, Zacchaeus, was a Jew. So he's gathering taxes from his own people. And so, uh, I don't know any IRS agents, but I'm expecting that they're probably not the most loved people in town, but he was, he was way more than that. He, he was the kind of guy that had become amazingly wealthy. Next, next slide, if you would. He wanted to see Jesus. He was, uh, uh, because, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I have cheated. Uh, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is God's Word. This is His revelation for us today. And what we want to do is see this this ability that Jesus had to see people that other people would pass by and spend time with them. Now, first thing we learn about this is that there's some reason that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. There's some reason, right? Some reason drove him. Now, I just want you to indulge me for a minute and think to yourself, why would this guy who's at the top of his game... Why would this guy who has all the money he needed, why would he want to see Jesus? What was driving him there? Well, my guess is that he had heard about some of the things Jesus had done. So this isn't in Scripture what I'm about to, this story I'm about to put together for you, but I'm trying to, trying to figure out why this guy wanted to see Jesus. So imagine Jesus knows this guy who's got a withered hand. Uh, this, this man is, uh, uh, can't, uh, can't work. And uh, he has a very difficult time. We've read about him earlier. Next slide, if you would. Uh, in, in Luke 6, uh, 6 he, he, uh, he's the kind of guy that uh, he has trouble making his tax payment because of this birth defect. And Zacchaeus has been to this guy's town before, but this guy's not paying because, well, actually, he runs away when he sees Zacchaeus and his entourage show up. He takes off because he doesn't have the ability to pay. Well, Zacchaeus uh, arrives there uh, some months later, and this time he's going to take this guy off the debtor's prison. This time, this guy is going to uh, pay the piper. But when he arrives there, this man with the withered hand, he's not running away. He's met Jesus, if you would advance me. Uh, yeah, Jesus has come to his town, and he's restored his hand. And, and, and so Jesus, is, he's got this story about this man who came through their town and healed him. And now he not only has the ability to pay his taxes, but his back taxes. And because he's been able to work. And Zacchaeus is blown away. He's like, what type of person can restore the withered hand of, 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 an, of an individual who's born that way? There's another uh, person that Zacchaeus loves to go visit. It's this woman, uh, and, and she has a son who's amazingly uh, a great carpenter, builder, and he charges her four times 
uh, the amount than he should because her son is always working. But several months ago, he went to that town where she lived and found out her son was dying. Uh, and she's uh, uh, trying to nurse him on uh, the, his deathbed, literally his deathbed. And, and Zacchaeus told her, says, look, a couple months I'm coming back. And I don't care what you got to do. You got to prostitute yourself. Doesn't matter to me. You're going to come up with that cash. And she says, you understand, I got to take care of my son. Well, he hears through the grapevine, that woman's son has died. And so Zacchaeus is like, well, we're going to haul her off. But when he gets there, he finds this woman is embracing uh, his, uh, her son. And, and he's blown away. He hears this story about, if you would advance me, uh, he hears a story about this this, this uh, 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 Jesus has come to her down, and, and when they were carrying his, her son through the town, Jesus walked up, and he touched the coffin, and this guy sat up. And like Zacchaeus, again, he's blown away. He can't imagine what type of man this must be. And then Zacchaeus hears that Jesus is coming to Jericho, his hometown, and he's just got to see who this man is who restored withered hands and raised people from the dead and does this amazing teaching he's the buzz he's big man on campus everybody wants to see jesus if you would um people look for jesus because they hear about what he has done that's why zacchaeus climbed the tree that's why zacchaeus would embarrass himself before all his countrymen that's why he would take the risk of doing what he did and, and, and putting himself out there, all right? Jesus says in Matthew 6, 6, 6 16, the, 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 from the Sermon on the Mount, he says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So some of us don't want anyone, right, to know what we've done because we don't want any of the, you know, glory coming to us. Great, that's our, that should be your attitude. But when we announce what God has done through us, through the church, right? Then we're glorifying the Father. And Jesus says, do that. Let people know what God is doing through you because it brings glory to the Father. Because when God does things through us, people take notice of who Jesus is because people are looking uh, for something because they hear about what God has done. Um, several years ago, uh, we've, we've done this for actually from the beginning almost, uh, some type of work camp week or work camp weekend, this recent, most recent time, we call it Compassion Weekend. And uh, uh, we've done projects like, I remember building, or the group building the woodshed for Annie Carter and taking in wood, or, or the one of 30-some handicap ramps that have been put together and and placed in different homes, or the Truth House Project, where we were trying to restore a, a house in Danville that is now occupied by women who've come out of prison, and instead of going back to prostitution and drugs, now they get a second chance with a family. And all of this is, is you know, we've participated in these types of things because we understand that when we do good works, it becomes a light into the community, and people want to know about Jesus. And so it's so important that we understand for the next three years, we're really trying to elevate two things. First thing, we're trying to elevate compassion of Christ in our community. And the second thing we're trying to elevate is our own spiritual maturity. Because I'm convinced that if we know who Jesus is, we'll act more like Jesus did. And in doing so, we'll bring more people to understand that they have a Heavenly Father that loves them uh, like no other. And so... People look for Jesus because they hear about what he has done. Next slide, if you will. Uh, Zacchaeus had to get over himself, and he had to get above the crowd to see Jesus. What was, what was keeping Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus? It was the crowd, right? So, uh, but first he has to get over his own pride. First he has to get over his own, you know, um, like, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not following this Jesus. Look how wealthy I am. And he had to get over himself. So pride is a huge barrier to coming to have a relationship with Jesus. And oftentimes when we're talking to people that we want to know Jesus, uh, pride, there are issues like, oh, I'm not going to church or that's for kids or, or whatever. So they have to get over their pride. When, when, when Zacchaeus climbed that tree, he took on the shame of his community because Grown men don't climb trees. Just like last week when Paul was presenting the gospel uh, of the prodigal son, fathers don't run, right? 
They, that's not what a grown man does, not in that day and time, right? And, and so Zacchaeus, he climbs up this sycamore tree to get a, le- a look at Jesus. And I suspect there were probably others up there, probably kids up there. He probably climbs that tree and there's a host of, you, uh, of, of short people uh, up there, right? Uh, because he's trying to get a, a good look at who this Jesus guy is. And so uh, then, then he had to get a, a, above the crowd as well. So there, that's another barrier. That there are righteous people who are getting in the way of Zacchaeus knowing, uh, uh, finding uh, any religious hope, any spiritual hope, because remember, they have, ter- they have uh, labeled him as a sinner, and he also is a tax collector. Now, sometimes we forget about this, but that's a legal term in the first century. And if you are righteous... It was against the, the code of ethics, if you will, the rabbis, that you would eat with sinners. Jesus breaks all the rules. And so Zacchaeus is used to being ostracized by the righteous. But here comes this rabbi like no other rabbi. And so he's pushing past people's bad opinions of him. He's getting over himself and pushing past his pride. There's this woman, Anne Rice, maybe some of you read her books, uh, Diaries of the Vampire or something like that, right? I haven't. But I did uh, see this interview of Anne Rice when she was being interviewed by uh, Charlie Rose. And Charlie Rose asked her, he says, uh, why in the world would you become a Christian? And she said, well, I read this book by N.T. Wright. N.T. Wright's one of my favorite writers, and, and, and the title of the book was The Resurrection of Jesus. And she, she responds to this you know, condescending question by Charlie Rose by saying, I came to the conclusion that Jesus did raise from the dead, and that a man from another world entered this world, and that changed everything, changed my life. And uh, Charlie, he's blown away, you know, at this statement. Anne Rice at the top of her game, you know, lauded and applauded by uh, the New York writers and all that type of thing. So, so there are people who are at the top of their game that come to an understanding that Jesus is who he said he is. And, and one of the barriers you have to get by is pride. And another the barrier they have to get by are Christians. Sometimes Christians don't look very much like they're Christ, do they? Right? I've told you stories about the guy I knew who came to church and he tried to sit down and people in the row saw him come in so they moved to the outside of the row so he couldn't sit down. Right? Like, What type of church is that? Uh, look, if you're looking for a perfect church, this is not it. Go somewhere else. It ain't going to happen. Right? We're all broken. You know, welcome to this dysfunctional family of Cornerstone. And, and here's what we know, that we're, because of Jesus, we're being put back together, right? We're being put back together. And, and so sometimes we have bad experiences in churches. Maybe you've had one here. But a bad experience at a church does not give us the license to write off Jesus. Like, we have to get over that. We have to get above the crowd. We have to uh, have, a, have a desire to pursue Jesus even if... Christians get in the way. Uh, And and so it's very important that we understand that Zacchaeus, he's overcoming some big barriers. Uh, Next slide, if you would. Um, He gave 50% to charity and 400% in restitution to the people that he cheated. Now, if you study the book of Leviticus, there are percentages that when you... uh, when you take something from someone, you're supposed to give this percentage back. 20% plus the amount that is owed to them. Zacchaeus gives 400% to those people that he ripped off. And then he just takes 50% of his wealth and gives it to charity. That is amazing. Do you know why he does that? Because the grace of Jesus Christ has now entered into his heart, mind, and world. And now it's no longer about wealth or status or, or any of that. It's about like, this Jesus, he, he needs, everybody needs to know about him. Whenever I'm asked the question, well, um, how much should I give? Well, <laughs> all right, so that's the wrong question. It's like, here's the right statement. I can't outgive God, whether it's time or money or whatever it is. You can't outgive God. And the more you give, the more joy, the more, the more uh, meaning and purpose and understanding that you'll have in your life. Um, next slide, if you would. So Jesus, he never saw lost people as lost causes. Every time I'm building a sermon, I've always got a few people on my mind. And this week, I had on my mind 
my, my, one of my daughters that is distant from God. I so, so desperately want her to come know the Father as, as so many of us know the Father. I bet there are other parents that have wayward children or wayward family members or somebody you work with that's distant from God and, and like it's almost impossible to imagine them coming to the to the feet of Jesus, to come to church, to like be taking communion and lifting their hands and praise. Like that is just almost unconceivable. Like how in the world would that happen? That's because that's, that's human vision that is distorting our perspective of the situation. Jesus never saw lost people as lost causes. The ISIS leader that's cutting the head off Christians, Jesus would say, not a lost cause. Not a lost cause. Uh, the, the, the prostitute, Jesus said, not a lost cause. Matter of fact, if you would, the next slide. The, Jesus sees people all through the Gospels. You've got to take note of this. Jesus saw her, the woman who was bent over, and, and, call, and, and called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Jesus saw him lying there, the guy on the mat. He says, Do you want to get well? Raises him up. Jesus saw the person weeping, uh, saw her weeping, and and he, and he came to her, and, and he was deeply moved and, and, and troubled in his spirit. He wanted to help. Jesus looked at him, the rich young ruler, and loved him. And then in this passage, we read that Jesus looked up into the tree. Jesus is always looking at people that we call lost causes, but he sees them as a, as, as a person who could change, as a person who could be transformed. And this, this is a, look, you're not born this way. I'm not born this way. Here's how we're born. We're born to judge people. Like, oh, that's decisions they made. That's why they're there. They haven't worked hard enough. They shouldn't do drugs. They shouldn't have made those choices. Like, that's, the, that's what comes to us naturally. But with Jesus, we begin to see people as he sees people, and he goes, look, that's a potential child of God. He looked at Paul, the killer of Christians. He goes, there's my preacher to the Gentiles. I mean, look at what Jesus does. He's constantly taking people that we would consider lost causes and going, wait until you see what I'm going to do through this person, right? Um, there's this uh, uh, device called eSight. It's an amazing device to help people who are legally blind. It's, it's a recent in, uh, invention. And I just want to show you uh, a guy who's legally blind getting to see for the first time. If we could play this uh, video. Hit it again, please. Whenever, whenever you're ready, <sighs> you got to be comfortable. Exciting. Ready? Okay. Unbelievable. I can actually see your eye. Uh... <laughs> I can see it. I can see your whole face. I can see your eyebrows. This is for the rest of your life. That's incredible. So their mission statement is, everybody deserves to see. Our mission statement is, everybody deserves to be seen, right? Everybody deserves to be seen. Can you imagine what that man must have been uh, experiencing when he saw uh, that other guy's face for the first time? I mean, he's, he's deeply moved, obviously, and it touches our heart. First time I, I watched that, I'm, I'm like, I'm tearing up, right? All right, I won't admit that but one time, but it did happen. And so, so what I'm saying is that, that like, we're really touched when people begin to see for the first time. Can you imagine how God feels when we begin to see lost people, not as lost causes, for the first time? I'd say he begins to weep. They're finally getting it. They're finally starting that conversation. They're, they're finally buying that guy's lunch. They're finally stopping long enough to have a conversation with that woman who no one's talked to. They're going to that lunch table at school. 
they, they were going in the rest stop and they, they just had to make a quick stop and get back on the road. But they saw somebody sitting there and they looked really washed out. Let me just say hi. Let me just, let me spend a little bit of time with that person. Look, you're not going to come to this naturally. Naturally, you're going you're gonna to stick to your schedule. Naturally, you're going to move on to your next appointment. Naturally, you're going to make sure that you get the job done. Supernaturally, you're going to stop and take time. Supernaturally, you're going to, you're going to, God will give us the ability, if we ask Him, for the vision that Jesus had to see people who are ready and hungry for the gospel. We need to stop and look for people who are hurting. Next slide, if you will. Aaron Chambers says, Fish don't jump into the boat. <laughs> Good soil doesn't jump onto seeds. Disciples don't make themselves. Sheep, coins, and sons don't find themselves. We have to go to the spots and look for them. If you're hearing this sermon, if you're considering what Jesus has done and what he's teaching us, then it's going to change your routine from time to time. You'll make you'll make an allowance to spend some time somewhere where people might be that are distant from God. Seriously, that is what Jesus is modeling for us. Let me tell you about this guy in Japan. Uh, pretty amazing guy, Yuko Shing. And I, don't, I probably butchered his name, so I'm sorry. Maybe I'll get to meet him one day, but <laughs> maybe in heaven, right? This guy is, has been talked about quite a bit, actually. He goes to a certain uh, mountain cliff by the sea on, uh, in, in, in one of the islands of Japan. He goes there every day. Sometimes he goes there multiple times a day. And uh, he doesn't go there necessarily to see the beautiful coastline. He goes there to look for people. You see, this is one of the number one places in Japan where people jump off cliffs to end their life. And so uh, Yukio, he's, uh, he's a guy that he recognizes after going there so much, he recognizes when people are there for the wrong reasons. Like the people he looks for, they're not carrying a camera. The people that he looks for, they're not carrying gifts from the souvenir shop. Uh, they're, they're not looking at the coastline. They're looking at the ground right before them. Their heads are down. And, and, and so what he'll do is, as he watches people, and he sees someone that is there for the wrong reason, he gently walks up to them, begins a conversation, and if they give him the opportunity, he'll rest his hand gently on their shoulder. And he says, he says, this has happened more than once, that when he touches them, they begin to weep. And they begin to confess why they're there to end their life. To this day, he's rescued more than 200 people from suicide off those cliffs. Is that amazing or what? I don't even know if this guy's a Christian, but I love what he does. He takes time to look at lost people and give them hope. Look, it doesn't take, you don't have to be educated. You can be educated. You don't have to be rich. You, you, you can be poor. It doesn't matter. What matters is that there's enough pause in our schedule for an opportunity to see people that are often walked by and, and, and we're just not paying attention to the God, who God is putting in our path. So we need a, a vision change. We need some spiritual glasses. We get that by reading the scripture, by looking at Jesus, by hearing stories like this of people who are making simple choices to put themselves in places where people are distant from God. And in doing so, they're turning hearts towards the Father. Last slide, if you would. Look, cornerstone. We are looking for lost people distant from God. We're looking for those people who, who, who have, have no relationship I know what it's like to get together on Sunday morning. You can't wait to see our friends. We can't wait to get together. But what type of gaps are there in our schedule to be with people who are far from God? And so, like, it's interesting. Uh, we have this run group, and there's this crazy person in this church that come up with this idea, and I'm still mad at her. But, uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so I've been trying to run. It's hilarious. Everyone I talk to when I say I'm trying to run is like, you don't run unless a bear's chasing you. But anyway, so, but it's interesting the kinds of people that we meet just running in Chatham. Like, we, we meet people often, like they're walking down the street. We'll say hello, we'll introduce ourselves. Sometimes they'll give us a name. 
Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just interesting, like, if we pay attention, and, and I try to do that in those moments, and then, like, we're all kind of standing there, you know, in our funny colored shorts and funny colored shoes and, and all that kind of thing, and, and people are like, it's, it's interesting if we'll just figure out a, something to change the routine and, like, open the door, and, like, it could be something as simple. I don't know what will become of that one day, but here's what I know, is that if we'll just... Like, change it up a little bit, pause a little bit, put ourselves in a position where, 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 where we could see people who are hurting. God will give us vision to see that. And all we have to do is have this love for people like Jesus had for people. It's amazing what difference can happen. Cornerstone is looking for people distant from God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this opportunity to Thank you for joining us. You can find us on the web at cornerstonechatham.org.